Hey guys, Turbo here, and today we have the 10 most common mistakes that people make in CS2 that put your team at a huge disadvantage. So if you want to win more, I got you. Number 10, overpeaking. CS2 is very unforgiving when it comes to overpeaking, especially on the CT side. So this is where you solo push one side of the map and put yourself in a position where you can easily get outnumbered. So instead, if you want to push out, go with a teammate and have an escape plan or just chill on your side of the map until your team has more info to play off of. Also, don't forget to check corners. Number nine, overstaying your welcome. This is a huge mistake you can make where you take on a gunfight by yourself and it drags on for way too long. So if you don't initially get the frag, just run back, give your team the info and regroup with more numbers. This also applies to holding a single angle for too long and just getting tunnel vision. Number eight, force buying every round. In CS2 especially, I've noticed that there's always those teammates that force buy no matter what the economic situation. Sometimes it's better to save your money for the next round so you can get everything you need. So instead of having like an M4 with no armor, you could have full armor, full util, and an M4. If you need to save, then you don't necessarily have to go with the default pistol with no util. You can buy a 5.7 or a Deagle and a Nade or a Flash with, of course, no armor. Spend as little as you can, and your only goal is to win a gunfight, steal a better weapon, and save. But if your team steps up and you get into an advantageous position, consider going for the win at that point. Number seven, not buying with the team. Speaking of the team stepping up, it's always a good idea to coordinate buys with the team. If everyone is broke except for one person, they can buy the team some pistols, but if everyone everyone on the team is kind of broke, consider saving that round so you can full buy the next round. Because if you have like two people who buy and then three people saving, like you're not super likely to win the round. I mean, if you do, then awesome, but it's all about playing the numbers game and playing smart. Basically, buy as a team and save as a team. Number six, not using voice chat. One of the biggest aspects of CS2 is teamwork, but the only way to achieve that, especially when solo queuing, is to use your mic. If you have a plan in your head, but don't relay it to the team, you're setting yourself up for failure. I have a friend who does that all the time. He expects people to do things without him mentioning anything, and it never really works out because nobody can read your mind, and that's not even mentioning callouts. If you see enemies pushing down a certain area of the map, like unless you say like three mid or whatever callout is relevant, it severely hurts your team because they don't really know what's going on. When everyone on a team uses their mic, the team has a much higher chance to win the round because generally everybody is on the same page. And obviously if you don't talk, expect to lose almost every time. Just use your mic. If you can't use a mic, then use text chat. Just communicate. Number five, ignoring map control. This is another big one that contributes to a lot of lost rounds. I mean, of course, there's five players on each team and you can break the map down into a chessboard pretty much. So let's do Mirage for an example. On CT side, you can play either A, B, or mid and each have their own split path. A main, palace for A, apartments and cat for B, and mid and underpass for mid. Well, obviously. When you push up and gain more map control, it narrows down where the enemies could be. So gaining control of the map without getting taken out is crucial to gain the advantage in the late round. For example, if you gain top mid, underpass, and apps control within the first like 30 seconds of the round, the only place where the enemies could be is anywhere around A. So this is also called process of elimination, and it's the best way to have an understanding of what the enemies are doing in any given round, even if you don't see them or hear them. So don't neglect map control. Number four, spray control and aiming. So aiming in CS2 is a little bit different than it was in CSGO. Generally, it's the same concept, but the mechanics are a little bit different. Spraying obviously is less consistent, but a lot of the core fundamentals are still there, like stopping when you shoot for full accuracy. So to win more gunfights, there's a few things you need to know. First of all, positioning. You want to try to play angles where you have some amount of cover. So if you miss your first initial shot, you can get to cover, reload, and coordinate with your team to either double peek or wait until the enemy loses concentration and re-peak from the same angle or peak from a different angle. You also need to practice aiming and firing. So there's three ways to shoot. There's tap firing where you shoot one bullet at a time. And if you're a headshot machine, this is the way to go. Burst firing where you shoot a few bullets in quick succession. And this can work in some scenarios, but you do need to practice dealing with the recoil to be as accurate as possible. And spraying. Of course, it's less powerful in CS2 due to the recoil changes, but, but generally you want to pull down on your mouse for the first seven to 10 bullets and then go either left or right, depending on 
what you're holding. And of course, you know, depending on the weapon, it can be a little bit different. Make sure to practice recoil for all the guns that you plan on using. But you want to combine all these techniques with proper counter strafing. So basically you strafe either left or right and stop on a dime and then take the shot and then go the other direction and rinse and repeat. You can do this in a practice lobby. Remember, practice makes perfect. Number three, not trading kills. This is a mistake I experience constantly when I solo queue. Pretty much you want to push up with a teammate nearby in case you lose the gunfight. Then your teammate can take the opportunity to run up and get the trade. Because a lot of the time you have teammates who play way too passively while you're playing aggressively and they kind of stay too far away from the battle to trade effectively. And you end up in a situation where the other team gets the early pick and they get the early advantage and your team doesn't really do anything to capitalize. I mean, of course, don't stand right next to each other, but you know, have enough space where you can avoid utility damage, but also be able to run up quickly and get the trade to keep the game even. Number two, crosshair placement. Have you ever played with a teammate who just keeps his crosshair on the floor or pretty much anywhere but where the enemies could be coming from? Then when the enemy pops up, the only option is to go for a crazy flick and it almost never works out. Well, crosshair placement is one of the most important techniques in CS2. And basically it's just aiming your crosshair where you think the enemy is going to be coming from. So instead of doing a 90 degree flick, your crosshair is in a place where you might just have to do a small little micro correction and click. This can drastically increase your chances to win a gunfight, but you do need to practice to know exactly where to aim. And it comes from personal experience where you just have to play the game a lot and just try things out. If you make a mistake, try to correct it. But in CS2, generally most people like to wide peak an angle. Less often, they'll do a more shallow peak. And just based off of that, it's better to aim a little farther away from the wall where the enemy will strafe into versus keeping the crosshair in a position to counter a short peak. So instead of aiming right next to the wall, aim a little bit farther away depending on what the enemies do round to round it can differ because i mean they might just shallow peek everything you know that's the beauty of cs2 every match is always different on t side you want to practice pre-aiming common angles basically just keep the crosshair as close to headshot level as possible when you peek and you see the enemy aim at the head and click basically it just sets up the gunfights to be in your favor and number one cs2 is a team game because Ultimately, yeah, CS2 is a team game. You either win as a team or you lose as a team. Sure, you can attempt to do some solo heroics, but unless you have an extremely high amount of skill and confidence, it probably won't work in the way you wanted it to. So if you do play explosively and get a few frags, have your team follow you with a reasonable amount of distance, and then you can capitalize, get the bomb planted, and be in a position where your team has a really good chance to win the round. You know, obviously you need to make sure you watch all the flanks, watch all the angles. Don't play out in the open, try to find cover because it's all about coming up with strategies to outplay the other team. And because sometimes having a discussion and asking what everyone thinks can lead to better decision-making. If you're just doing everything yourself, then you might not necessarily come up with the best strategy, right? And of course, nobody likes toxic teammates who constantly trash talk and put down teammates. So if you do that, then you're part of the problem. Instead of blaming others for your losses, just take some responsibility and realize when you're playing a team game, you should focus on building up your teammates to make them play better, not tearing them down to tilt them and make them play worse. I'm sure all of us have experienced that at some point. And I have a bonus for you guys who are still watching. By the way, you are an absolute legend, but Win or lose, CS2 is a game and it's all about having fun and slowly improving over time. You can actually learn way more from a loss than a win. So, you know, if you go back and watch the demo, but Valve kind of ruined that. So for now, try to record the games that you want to watch back later, analyze your gameplay, how you communicate with your team, figure out your strengths and weaknesses, and focus on improving on your shortcomings. And with time, you'll be a much more well-rounded player capable of shifting the momentum onto the side of your team. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a like if it helped, leave a comment with anything that I forgot to mention, and make sure to sub with the bell if you haven't already. By the way, doing a giveaway in the Discord server right now. Don't forget to enter. Peace.